Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Today I'm going to go through some basics of using a multimeter. Uh, if you've seen a number of my videos, I'm always using a multimeter to test various things and when I'm doing some type of modification on the electrical system, I'm always pulling out a multimeter and, and showing uh, voltage and current and stuff like that. But uh, some people don't really know what multimeters are all about, so I've had several requests maybe just to do a basic video on how to use a multimeter. So that's what this is going to be. Um, I carry two different types of multimeters here. Um, basically a multimeter measures voltage and resistance in the form of ohms and uh, current in the form of amps. So here's my tried and true old fluke one I've had for many years. Most people don't need to buy an expensive one like this if they're just using it the odd time. That's why something like this is perfectly fine. This is a UNI-T multimeter. It also has a clamp on uh, current meter built in which is nice. But anyway, um, I advise if you're going to get a multimeter is try to get one that's called an auto ranging multimeter. Say for instance you're going to measure DC volts and that's what this symbol is. The V with the flat part on top versus AC volts which is a V with a sine wave on top. Um, if you, This multimeter when I hook it up to say 2 volts or 12 volts or 100 volts it'll auto range so I won't have to change anything where some of them will have a bunch of different selection switches where you have to go through and pick 2 volt range or 10 volt range or 100 volt range so it just makes it more convenient and now they've come down way down in price so um, you don't even need to, to get that old style. Anyway the, the basic measurements are like I say there's DC volts which is in your RV is going to be your battery power um, or flashlight batteries that type of power um, or AC volts which is your shore power that you plug into in the RV park or you know you plug in your normal household type appliances into. Another important one is called ohms this symbol down here the Greek symbol for omega so ohms is a, a measurement of resistance so uh, that's like, um, say a light bulb glows, uh, glows hot and puts out light because there's a filament in there that has some resistance to the, to the, to the power that's going through it. So um, a lot of times you're going to use that to measure elements or light bulbs. Uh, this one also has kind of a, uh, uh, this symbol for sound. That's to measure continuity. You can use it in both those uh, those. Uh, selections there and then finally over here we have amperage so this can also measure the amperage going through a wire only thing is to use it on a meter like this I'd have to break open the wire and and uh, put the leads in between so that the power runs through the multimeter that's the advantage of these clamp on ones you just have to clamp this around the wire and you can get a measurement from what's the power that's going through the wire uses sort of a, a magnetic core in there. So anyway, let's go through and do some basic tests you might find when you're uh, testing things around your RV. We'll start with the battery. Okay, so I've set up a little test bed here for testing DC power. My Noco battery booster here is going to take the place of uh, the RV battery. So just think of this as the RV battery and this being the, the positive and this being the negative terminal on the battery. So let's we'll go through first. Uh, one thing you do all the time is if you wanted to test uh, your battery voltage, you just put her on the the terminals, and it would read out here. So 12.31 volts would be my battery. So that's handy to see the state of your battery. Um, you know, a lot of times in RVs they just have the dummy lights, um, and so sometimes it's nice to go straight to a battery or a car battery and see if if it's uh, got a proper voltage to it. Um, the next thing is checking polarity. Now this is something I do all the time in, when I'm working in the RV when I'm hooking things up because you just can't trust RV wiring to be the right color code. So say I had two wires that I wanted to check. Um, if, if I put it on the, the negative and the positive and, I, and it looks like this I'm good to go. Just let me switch the leads here. Put the backwards here. Now you see there's a negative symbol here. 
So that way I can check for correct polarity before I hook up anything to, to a 12 volt wire that's in the rig. Say I'm doing a mod and hooking up a fan or something like that. I want to make sure through testing that I have uh, correct polarity. So let's just check an unknown set of wires. So coming out of the back of my NOCO booster is a 12 volt port and a cigarette lighter socket. So I plug this in here. This is one that I rigged up for test before. But, you know, to us it's an unknown set of wires, which is positive, which is negative. So I've hooked the wires up, and you can see i got a negative symbol up here. So that means my polarity is reverse of what my wires are showing. So that means the negative is on the positive side, and the positive is on the negative side. So if we reverse that, we should get correct polarity, and then we'll know, well, we know right now which wires are, but in my mind I like to just hook the wires up for correct polarity then I know for sure. There we go I reversed the leads now you can see I don't have the negative symbol I got 12.39 volts so now I know whatever's on the red lead of the multimeter here is going to be the positive wire and what's on the the black lead is going to be the negative wire so this is just a way to to figure out correct polarity when you're hooking something up to your RV some type of new uh, new thing that you're installing and you need to know where to hook things up hook things up backwards you're going to be blowing fuses or causing problems so and like i've demoed in a lot of my mods there's no rhyme or reason to rv color coding i've seen you know where black sometimes is positive sometimes it's white sometimes it's red you just never know so it's always a good idea to be able to utilize something like a multimeter to check everything before you go to hook anything up The multimeter is also handy for testing batteries. Around the RV we'll have all sorts of strange batteries. Um, say this button battery here, if I wanted to test it, I just go like that, say 3.178 volts. It's a good way to know if a battery is, is going dead or not. For instance, here's a couple strange batteries that are used in my uh, RV's wireless remote. I'll test this one here. We got Oh, get the leads right. 12.58 volts. And check this other one here. And you can see we got 9 volts. So that tells me instantly this was a weak battery. Good way to check batteries quickly. If, um, another thing to check is resistance. So on here we would switch over to the ohms mode down here. And it's a quick way to, to check a bulb. You can see I got 1.6 ohms there. That's your, your classic bulb they use in RV lights. Um, also, I've used this uh, in a repair for uh, the heater element in my refrigerator. Um, I was able to check the, the ohms of it and see if it was good or bad. Um, it's also a good quick check for water heater elements, all sorts of elements and things like that bulbs. Um, if you want to do a, a quick check, if you know the, the ohms is pretty low, like these bulbs are pretty low, you can just go like this and you'll get an audio alert that you have good continuity, which is good for checking a wire. Say you have a wire and you think, oh, there might be a bad connection on a wire. You could just hook at both ends of the wire and then it'll tell you, okay, I got good continuity in that wire which is nice. The, the beeping is nice so you don't have to actually look at the meter. But to use that mode you have to be fairly fairly low ohms of resistance. Another big test for continuity is going to be fuses. I really do that a lot to check fuses. If you visually can't see that there's a problem you can just go across the fuse and if you get a, a beep or near zero ohms you know the fuse is going to be good. If you don't, you know that fuse is bad. That's especially useful on these glass fuses because sometimes you can look inside and it looks fine, but maybe it's broken at one end. And then the multimeter will tell you pretty quickly if it's got continuity or not. So next is measuring amperage or current in a wire. Um, with my fluke, I could move this lead over here to where it says 10 amp. There's a 10 amp maximum on it. And then I could break open the wire and put it in line with one of the, one of the leads. 
and I would get a measurement of current. Well, that's where these clamp-on meters come in a lot more handy. This actually has a range up to 100 amps on both AC or DC. You've probably seen me use it several times in videos when I'm doing batteries. So you just have to clamp it around one of the, the wire leads, either negative or positive. So let me turn on this bulb here. Oops, there we go. And you can see it's measuring 1.32 amps, which is about right for, for this bulb. I don't find this particular meter is going to be super accurate or anything. I think I paid around 45 bucks US for the meter, but uh, for all the things it does and the size, I think it's a, a really handy meter for an RVer to have. It does, uh, it has the built in auto ranging multimeter. It has ohms and then it also has this clamp on ability. Let's finish up this basic video with AC power. That would be the shore power. It's usually between 110 and 120 volts. Um, now this is a, a lot more dangerous than your 12 volt battery power. Um, with 12 volt batteries you could actually take your hands and touch both uh, terminals and it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt you. Um, there's enough uh, resistance in your skin that you wouldn't you wouldn't get any shocks or anything. But household power, AC power is a different story. You can you can cause harm to yourself, and it's much more likely to arc. So um, I'll show you I'll show you how to test it. But a disclaimer here: I'm not uh, telling you to do this unless you're really confident with what you're doing. So you got your normal uh, AC power outlet here, and I want to test if there's voltage. So I put it in AC mode here with a little sine wave or the squiggly wave above and then I put in my leads and you can see I got 121.1 AC so I know there's power at that socket. Um, you can also test if it's wired correctly um, by going down to this ground the bottom one there and sticking it in here and you can see I got 121. That means that this is the what they call the hot um, lead and this would be the neutral. So you also can go over here and check between the neutral and ground. I don't want to get too technical here, but uh, it's a good way to check if the if it's wired properly. You can see this the size of this over here. We have a, a long slot and then a short little slot. And the short slot should be the hot one. So if it's wired backwards, that means your RV is wired backwards. You can buy little testers and that's probably the way to go um, for most people because you can plug a little tester in there and it will light up and tell you whether the, the plug is good or bad. I'm just showing you that a multimeter can also be used to do that task. Another handy tool is this non-contact and this is what I really recommend for, for most people to have because it's all made of plastic and you don't even really have to touch anything. You can go up to a wire and if it's hot it'll it'll read out. Like I'll put it in the, the hot slot here that has the, the 120. Oh, first we'll turn it on, that'd be a good idea. And we'll put it in there. And you can see right away, I don't even have to, to touch the lead in there and it goes off. And it doesn't go off on the neutral or the ground. So if the hot was over here, if it was miswired in any way, it would be going off on, on this long slot here or the, the bottom, this round um, slot would go off. So you only want it to go off on the, the short slot there. You can, I'll leave some links in the, in the description below about testing AC power. I don't want to get in, in too much into it because I think it's beyond what, what basic people are going to want to go into. There's testers you can buy and also for the power pedestal there's testers and I really advise getting yourself a surge protector for the RV and it'll tell you right away if there's a problem with your AC power but I just wanted to show you that there is with a multimeter you can also test the AC power quickly. Well there you go a few basics of multimeters. I hope that helps folks who are wondering what the heck I was doing with these things when I was showing off stuff. I'm sure a lot of it sounded like womp, 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 womp to some people, but uh, hopefully I explained a little bit about how they work and a few of the things you can test with them around the RV. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers.